Hello. This talk is an introduction to social media data analysis with Twitter and is intended to be a precursor to learning about MojDay, the software that helps with social media data analysis. I just want to start by saying how I view Twitter data from a social science research perspective and it's as a partial replacement for surveys. When I used to walk through the streets of Wolverhampton, I would often get stopped in the town centre by a person with a, a clipboard asking me questions about which products I like. And they worked for a market research company, and I assume that there were people like them in all the city centres around the country. And they haven't been there for the past 10 years or so, and I think it's largely because Twitter analysis has replaced surveys for the uh, market research. Twitter analysis, Facebook analysis and social media has replaced surveys for market research because this kind of data from social media is a continual stream of opinions or contains a continual stream of opinions and if you can mine it for opinions relevant to your products then perhaps you don't need the surveys as much or at all. So I think social media has largely eclipsed surveys for some types of market research and I think social media can perform a role, I think not as big a role, but a role in social science research as well. In this talk I'm going to discuss large scale, medium scale and small scale Twitter research projects such as those that could be taken with the help of the Mojday software. And I'm going to illustrate large scale projects with a quantitative, primarily quantitative partly qualitative analysis of the data, medium scale with content analysis, thematic analysis, and an analysis of top tweets, and small scale with an example of how you can quickly get insights into your topic from uh, Twitter data. My large scale example is about racism during COVID-19. It's a large scale Twitter analysis it is nearly 10 million tweets from ongoing collection of uh, uh, tweets related to COVID-19 between March and June 2020, during the early days of the uh, public reaction to it in the UK at least. For this project, we identified a set of racism related tweets within the COVID-19 tweets and the, these were identified as the tweets containing any of the following words in the list. We took some experimenting to decide which were the best words for the list, and this was the final decision. And we used graphs and word frequency analysis to identify e the evolution of debates about racism over time, at least as reflected on Twitter. This is one of the graphs that we produced in our project from Twitter data. This is a graph of the percentage of tweets about racism within the collection of COVID-19 tweets. And if you look at the shapes in this graph, you can see how the debate evolved around racism. The first bump in uh, March was around a controversial Trump uh, comment from Trump calling COVID-19, the Chinese virus, and there were many tweets accusing him of racism for that and discussions around racism based on his comments. And then the killing of George Floyd, you can see, led to a huge increase in the percentage of tweets about racism. And the Black Lives Matter protest, again, sustained a huge amount of tweeting about racism during COVID-19. So we can see from this trend that there were continual discussions of racism related to COVID-19, but these two events were the most important in terms of the volume of tweeting about the topic. This is a kind of in information that you could only get evidence for from large scale Twitter collection. You wouldn't you might guess that this is what had happened, but you wouldn't get, you could only get evidence from social media, I think. Here's a more detailed analysis of topics within the racism tweets. So these graphs show five different themes within the racism tweets and how they evolved over time. 
For this, we spent some time identifying sets of appropriate keywords to characterize each topic. And you can see the calling COVID-19 the, the Chinese virus or the Wuhan virus theme decreased over time. There was a big peak when Trump used the term and then it decreased over time. Another theme was specifically anti-Asian comments. Another theme was disparities, particularly disparities in death rates due to COVID-19 amongst the ethnic communities. Another theme, the yellow theme, perhaps the most interesting one, is discussions of systematic or structural or systemic racism. And we can see that that didn't exist in the early part of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, but started to appear in uh, early April and also increased after the start of the reaction to the killing of George Floyd. And you can see that the Black Lives Matter issue was really hardly discussed at all until the killing of George Floyd. So this is clear evidence that, at least on Twitter, it became an issue because of the killing of George Floyd, and it was almost ignored before then, despite other discussions of racism. Here's an example of a medium-sized projects with Twitter. Well, a list of medium-sized projects. I'll give some details in a bit, but I just want to show the variety of topics that you can produce with analysing tweets um, on a medium scale. So this project looked at tweeting about eczema, used a content analysis approach, type of approach to analyse tweets about eczema to get the perspective of people that have eczema about their condition. This project from someone who came on a social media data analysis course was about the reach of a specific oral health promotion campaign on social media. This project investigated um, UNDP tweets for the extent to which their campaign resonated with the public on Twitter. And this one looked at climate change, the climate change debate on Twitter using a content analysis to look at the topics around climate debate on Twitter. So I would characterize these as medium sized projects. They didn't look at millions of tweets, but uh, they used strategies that require uh, quite a lot of tweets to work well. The research methods that you can use for a medium size collection of tweets include content analysis or thematic anal analysis. And for these, you would take a random sample of tweets for, for your topic, collect and, and um, generate a random sample of tweets for your topic. And they're quick-ish ways to get insights into your topic. If you do it formally, they're much slower than if you do them informally. And here's an example. We ran a, a quick project to investigate the uh, reactions to Nobel Prize announcements on Twitter. We used content analysis and the themes that we found within tweets discussing Nobel Prizes were jokes and political sarcasm for some of them, uh, alternative winners for the non-academic categories. No one suggested alternative winners for the academic categories. Agenda for the female w winner. 9% of tweets about the female winner, the only female winner in the year we analysed, mentioned that she was a woman. And sentiment only occurred in the lit for the Literature Prize. Well, mainly occurred for the Literature Prize. People were very positive about the Literature Prize um, more often than about the other prizes. I think that reflected public engagement with literature to a greater extent than the public engages with, for example, chemistry or physics or even medicine. So content analysis is a is a good uh, technique to identify themes in tweets or thematic analysis as well. Uh, another example of content analysis, I'm just going to take some extracts from a paper that ran a content analysis on Twitter. So they harvested 
46,000 tweets from a sample of 28 scholars. They wanted to know why scholars use Twitter. And one of their conclusions is that scholars cite work on Twitter, although often indirectly. And another one is that when scholars cite on Twitter, they are conversational type of citations. They're conversational types of citations reflecting a broader discussion crossing traditional disciplinary boundaries. So conversational and crossing boundaries are themes that they identified from their content analysis. So this project collected some tweets and then essentially the investigators read the tweets systematically to identify the themes in them through a content analysis. The eczema tweets were analysed with a thematic analysis. It's not quite the same as a content analysis, but um, involves similar steps. So the for the data for this was six months of tweets for the query My Eczema with Mojday. And the thematic analysis identified jokes about eczema severity or possible causes or treatments and these were used by people with eczema to report changes in their condition. So joking was a, a common theme amongst tweets from people with eczema. And another theme that we identified was that many tweeters discussed their eczema as though it had agency. And the example here, my eczema is furious in me in, in this heat, shows the person discussing eczema as if it's a person. So these are examples of two simple insights that we got through a thematic analysis of tweets on eczema. And this project was a, an unusual way of identifying the perspective of a person with eczema when they would usually be surveyed or interviewed or discuss, or talked to in uh, focus groups. It's not Social media analysis isn't better than the other approaches, but it's a, an alternative method of getting the user perspective. And a fourth example is an analysis of the most retweeted tweets from the UNDP. And the purpose of this was to find out for them what which topics were most successful from their tweets. And uh, this, dis, this discovered that important topics or successful topics were ones that were tied to a specific day like Women's Day. Uh, particularly uh, Holocaust Memorial Day and uh, individual news stories were also successful and female issues were more successful. So specific days and female related issues were the most successful. This is an example of a small scale Twitter project. This wasn't based on a formal analysis, but it was just a quick exploration of a topic um, we collected this data during the early days of the responses to the discovery of uh, Harvey Weinstein's crimes. We collected tweets for a week in the early stages, and we just looked to see if males and females responded differently in the way they tweeted about the event. And we found that there were differences. And this was really a, a couple of button clicks to get this data and we found terms that were more commonly used by males than females included liberal Trump, shit, leftist Harvey. And and these I would characterize these as a more a political in general. So liberal Trump, leftist as a political term. So males discuss the issue in a more political way. Whereas the female associated terms included words like thank. So often thank you, name of person for sharing your experience, uh, being disgusting, uh, uh, accusing the male uh, Harvey Weinstein of being disgusting, a very reasonable accusation, and uh, discussing the experiences of other women with the word she. So you can see that there were different perspectives taken by males and females on uh, Weinstein. So you can get quick insights into gender differences on March Day with just a few button clicks once you've collected the data. In summary, large scale Twitter analyses can use graphs 
and data mining, which we'll see later to get insights into general trends. Medium scale can use content analysis or thematic analysis or a discussion of the most retweeted to get insights into the topic or what works for um, a group of tweeters or a, a single tweeter. And small scale projects can get quick insights into a topic. Maybe you're not really interested in using Twitter for your main analysis, but you might use Twitter as a as an initial exploratory phase of your project to look for things that people are discussing that you might follow up with surveys or interviews. I hope that made sense. In other presentations, we'll talk about different ways of getting tweets and how to use Mojday to gather and analyze tweets.